This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. We, got, we can't fail this time. When God sent all of the dirt in, the nasty and the messed up, we, we can't fail. We've been pushing them out and kicking them out based on our own self-righteousness. And the church has become an enemy because people are looking for Christianity, but they can't find a Christian. Trinidad and Tobago. Get ready for Change Experience 2020. For one day only, join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar January 31st at the Hilton Conference Center. There's a mighty wind getting ready to blow through your household, getting ready to blow through this church, getting ready to blow through your life. You better get ready, honey. Put your seatbelt on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Register today for free while there's still time. For more details, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. A lot of things are not just going to be planned out in this life of the New Testament. Yes. Jesus has already done it, but how, how, how you get from where you are to position yourself to receiving everything he wants to do, man, you have to have this unseen partner. And he's telling you to do stuff that you never learned in college. He's telling you to do things that in some cases, sometimes it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense in the world, but it does make faith. Amen. And that, that's important. Now, now, I'm not talking about somebody who can't hear from the Holy Spirit. They don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. They're just, they're just, they're just weird. You understand what I'm saying? And you can tell when somebody's weird because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He just doesn't, he has manners. He just doesn't go around and, and you know, some of y'all ain't got good manners in the world, more or less talking about that was the Holy Spirit. We can tell when it's the Holy Spirit because he's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit's not going to stand up in the midst of even me preaching right now and say, Pastor, Pastor, the Lord says, the Lord, the Lord, shut, shut up, sit down. The Lord ain't said nothing to you. The Lord ain't said a word. Sit yourself down. <laughs> Let me go on. I apologize for that. <clears throat> shut yourself down, you know, Lord. All right, look at this, 2nd second, second second, uh, Corinthians chapter 3. Let me get the moving. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, let's, let's look at verse 5. Hmm. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think that, that any, uh, think anything as of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. Verse 6, who also has made us able ministers of the Old Testament. Huh? Oh, you called that? He's, he's made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter. Not of the letter, but of the, of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. The letter that kills today is a system of performance-based Christianity where we try to serve God and work to please Him in order to earn His blessing and his love. The sufficiency of God only comes as we minister in this New Testament. So God's not calling us to minister from the letter of performance-based Christianity under the law. And that's what he's talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's not what we are not, that, 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 that is not what we should be should be ministering to people. And that's basically what's been happening really around the world. Let me show you that if you do this, God will do that. 
and then I'm going to preach on the seven ways of getting God to do that. And the letter killeth. The Spirit gives life. Here's this distinction again between what's spiritual is under the grace of God and what's flesh is under self-performance, law-based Christianity. Now look at verse 7. Verse 7. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, stop. What was written and engraven in stones? Well, specifically, remember I told you the law consisted of ceremonial law, it consisted of civil law, it consisted of moral law. So what was specifically written on stone? The Ten Commandments. He says, well, if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. It was to be done away. Look at verse 8. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be more glorious or rather glorious? The ministration of the Spirit. So now we're seeing the administration of that which was on stone versus the administration of the Spirit. So now there is an administration of the Spirit. He says, for if the ministration of condemnation be glory. He is now referring to that which was written on stone as the ministration of death and the ministration of condemnation. Man, that's strong. Yes. That's strong. I mean, for people who stake their whole life on it, for people who go to church and hear it preached all the time, and now you, you're hearing it referring to what, what's going to be administered from this is death and what's going to be administered from this is condemnation. I mean, you know this, when you can't keep the law, condemnation comes in. It makes, it, condemnation is always about not being enough, okay? And, 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 and the administration or the administration of condemnation be glory. Now, at, at, at the time when it came in, there were some, I wish I had time to go through some of the things that happened as a result of sin just going crazy everywhere. When, when, when the law came in, transgression was made clear. You knew that when you were not going 55 miles an hour, that you were breaking the speed limit. But the problem with that is you begin to govern yourself with that. And so when you get somewhere like the Autobahn in Germany where they don't have a speed limit of 55 and you can go 120 because you're so speed limit 55 miles an hour conscious, you can't enjoy the liberty of 120 miles an hour or more with none of that around. So the consciousness, sin consciousness that was there. He says much more, he says, does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory? So now we're under new administration. We're under the administration of the Spirit of God. We're under the administration of the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God, glory, because of what Jesus has done, and the Spirit of God is going to be the administration of, of, the, of, 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 the, um, of the new covenant for those who are the righteousness of God. All right, now watch this. I want to go, I want to yeah, go to verse 10. I'm going to switch over to the message just for a moment. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory, the glory that excelleth. So something got better. 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Much more glorious. Say much more. It's much more glorious. It's much more glorious. All right, now flip over to the message for my time's sake because I don't want to, I, I need to move a little quicker. So, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 12 in the message. Now, I want you to see this. With that kind of hope to excite us, nothing holds us back. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 13. Verse, Unlike Moses, we have nothing to hide. <laughs> What, what was he really hiding? This is what he was hiding. 
the, glo the glory was disappearing. So he covered that up so they couldn't see that the glory was leaving because if they saw that the glory was leaving, they might not follow him no more. Like, you ain't got no more glory in your face. We ain't going to do what you tell us to do. He says, unlike Moses, we have nothing to hide. Everything is out in the open with us. He wore a veil so the children of Israel wouldn't notice that the glory was fading away. And they didn't notice. They didn't notice it then, and they don't notice it now. They don't notice that there's nothing left behind the veil. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you something right before we, we read the rest of this. In context, what is the veil today? It's condemnation that comes from the law that says they don't measure up to the standard and they are deserving of punishment and of, of a cursed life. And so he says that there's nothing left behind that veil. We're, we're, that's, that's not us anymore. Look at the next verse. Even today, when the proclamation of that old bankrupt government are read out, they can't see through it. Said even today, they can't see through it. Their churches and ministries today, they, they still can't see through it. Yeah. Only Christ can get rid of the veil. <laughs> so they can see for themselves there's nothing there. Verse 16, whenever though they turn to face God as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are face to face. Verse 17, now look at this, these next two verses. They suddenly recognize that God is a living personal presence and not a piece of chiseled stone. Mm. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, then that old constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. And it says we're free. We're free of it, praise God. Because we're not dealing with a piece of chisel stone anymore. We're dealing with a live spirit, praise God. Verse 18. All of us, nothing between us and God. Our faces shining with the brightness of his face. And so, we are transfigured, much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. Trial and torture. The, the uh, King James says, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Liberty from what? From the law. He's not talking about where the Spirit of the Lord is. Well, you know, there's liberty to shout, and there's liberty to dance, and there's liberty to scream, and there's liberty to run, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I don't want to go to the church. They ain't got no liberty. That ain't what he's talking about. <laughs> This is where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's liberation from the law. That's what he's talking about. Again, where the Spirit of the Lord is. What is our relationship with the Spirit of the Lord? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 through 10. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So there's some things that have not been hidden from you, but for you. Verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us. How? By his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, 
There, there, there's revelation. There are things that God wants to reveal to you by His Spirit. Things that you're going to get a hold of that is not going to come through your study of Sunday school quarterlies, but it's going to come through an intimate relationship with Him. Let me show you what I'm saying. Go to Matthew chapter 16, just real quickly. Matthew 16 and verse 13, you begin to see revelation flowing out of Peter. And then I want to move from that to Galatians chapter 1, 11 and 12, and we'll see where this ends up. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do they say that I am? And he says, well, some of them say that you're John the Baptist or Elias, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. 15. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Who do you say that I am? Yeah. All right, now watch this. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, you read that like this, but here's what it looked like. Read the next verse, and I'll, and I'll show you this. Uh, and go back. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17. And Jesus answered. All right, now, what did he answer? <laughs> he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He asked the question, Who men say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered. So what, what went on between and Jesus answered and what he just said? Now, here's what I believe happened. I believe he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Ooh, where'd that come from? Because where that came from didn't come out of here. It came out of here. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah. Flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. The acrobats of your mind had revealed this unto you, but it was my Father which is in heaven that revealed to you that I'm the Christ, the anointed one. Watch this, next verse. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Now, he, his name was Simon. But now he says, as a result of this revelation, I call you Peter. Oh, my goodness. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, hold on a minute. I limited this rock years ago to revelation. And upon this revelation, he'll build his church. But it lacked precision. And so I had people, myself included, going around saying, well, praise God, we'll get revelation and he'll build his church on revelation knowledge. That may be part of the truth, but it wasn't whole truth. He's already decided, he's already told us what the church is built on. Paul already established what the foundation is. He already said that foundation has already been laid and anybody that builds his church on this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, or wood, hay, and stubble is going to determine whether you're going to stay around at your evil day or you're going to burn up at your evil day based on the foundation that it was built on. So I know this is not just revelation. It is revelation about Jesus. It's revelation of Jesus. And he said, Simon, you become more solid than you used to be. You become rocky now, boy. Oh, my God, because on this rock, what rock? On this revelation of Jesus, I'm going to build my church on this revelation of Jesus. And on the revelation of Jesus, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the revelation of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Look at the next verse. 
and I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You not only have a revelation of Jesus, but I'm going to give you the authority to operate on this planet, and whatever you bind that, that's already bound, I'm going to give you authority to turn stuff on. It'll be his power, but you can now use it because you have a revelation of who Jesus is. And then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Revelation. Revelation of Jesus. That didn't come from their own ability. That, that didn't come from their self-effort. That didn't come from their experience. That came from God. Mm -hmm. So now God's moved on the inside of you. And he's got some more stuff to show you about Jesus. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man, that thing set me free. It just wasn't just revelation, but it was mm -hmm. stuff to tell me about Jesus. Yes. This conference has been stuff we've been telling you about Jesus. Yeah. Every message has been talking to you about Jesus. We've been unveiling Jesus, praise God. And I pray that you're getting a revelation of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Look at what, what Paul um, what Paul said, uh, Galatians 1, 11 and 12. Look at that, Galatians 1, 11 and 12. When Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit came, and one of his major works in our lives is to remove the veil that once obstructed our view so our eyes can see, our ears can hear, our hearts can fully comprehend the specifics and the special plans that God has meticulously prepared for us on this planet. Now look at this. Paul even said this about grace. But I, certi I, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me yes. is not after man. 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. We will leave with a stronger revelation of Jesus Christ. You say out loud, I receive it. Stronger revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, John 16, and let's start at verse 7, and, and and I think one more, and I think I'm most, I, can, I can now say what I want to say, and I think I can. It's going to be a little shocking, but I, 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 we got to go and deal with it. We, got, we can't fail this time. When God sent all of the dirt in, the nasty and the messed up, we, we can't fail. God. We've been pushing them out and kicking them out based on our own self-righteousness. And, you know, the little girl comes in right off the pole, and she's got a little skirt on, and you come and insult her and throw a blanket over her, no understanding, and she leaves and she never wants to have anything to do with that church anymore. And the church has become an enemy because people are looking for Christianity, but they can't find a Christian. And the pastors are so doggone worried about how that'll make them look that they have a hard time being a friend with sinners. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Oh, they dogged him out when he went to have dinner with a man who was a tax collector and was still in money. And in one day of a non-judgmental lunch, the Spirit of God moved in there, and that man stood up and said, okay, okay, I'll restore everybody fourfold. And I'll, in one day. How are you going to change the world and you don't want to have nothing to do with the people who need to change? How can a sick church go and help somebody sick in the world? Because you're afraid of what they might say about you. Get ready to receive a refreshing of God's grace with the Grace Life Conference Bundle. 
This conference has been stuff we've been telling you about Jesus. Yeah. Every message has been talking to you about Jesus. We've been unveiling Jesus, praise God. And I pray that you're getting a revelation of Jesus. More than I could ever put into words. You know, it, it, it's, it's changed my life. This is only my second year here. My dad's come like all, all the times I've had it. Uh, but just in these two years, it's, it's absolutely radically changed my life. It's just such a powerful thing knowing that, that everything that I need has already been taken care of. The Grace Life Conference Bundle includes 25 powerful sessions from some of the best grace teachers on the planet. Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Gregory Dickow, Earl Johnson, Michael Smith, and Andrew Womack. Also included in this offer, you will receive the Christmas in the City musical CD and the exclusive Grace Life t-shirt while supplies last. Go online to order today. We look in the mirror daily and ask ourselves questions. Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Did I work hard enough? What if you found out before you could ever be good? God gave you the very thing you're crying out for. No more settling for second best. Get all God has for you. Radical Women's Ministry presents Worth, a women's conference. Come out for the annual gathering of women, March 19th through the 21st. Hosted by me, Taffy Dollar, featuring Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Laura Pickett, with musical performances by Miranda Curtis and Demita Chandler. Don't miss impactful sessions, life-changing worship, and fellowship like no other. Join thousands of women as we learn about an infinite God who declares our value. Register now at taffydollar.org. We intercede daily for our partners, supporters, and friends, and we want to say a prayer over you today, right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that by the Spirit of God, you are rearranging and changing things on the inside of our partners. But I pray, Lord, that you will cause increase in every area, and I declare a blessing explosion in their lives right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, prayer changes things. And it is through this two-way communication with God that He gives us the wisdom and grace to walk in our victory over every situation. Whatever you need today, no matter how big or small, bring it before the Lord in prayer. You may request prayer today by phoning in or posting your prayer request online at creflodollarministries.org. Cleveland, Ohio, get ready for Change Experience 2020. For one night only, join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the Huntington Convention Center. There's a mighty wind getting ready to blow through your household, getting ready to blow through this church, getting ready to blow through your life. You better get ready, honey. Put your seatbelt on. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory be to God. We have to be certain of God's love and God's value for us and God's plan for us. Because if we're certain of that, then we can begin to turn fear on its ugly head and not allow it to come in and rob from us another day of our lives. God has something in store for you. Don't let nothing get in the way of it. I don't care if all your friends say they don't want to go no more. Come by yourself. Matter of fact, you ain't never alone because God always with you. The session time is 7 p.m., so don't delay. Register today for free while there's still time. For more details, visit creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. 